Hello and welcome to another episode of The Third Wheel. I'm one of your hosts, Hamish. And I'm your other host, Aaron. And today we're joined by a guest for the end of year episode. Her name is Hannah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hey guys, it's your girl Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, last episode of 2020. And we're really pleased to announce we're now a part of a podcast network, the Beyond Pod Squad, started by our friends over at Beyond Reproach. Um, you might recognize one of their hosts, uh, Stephanie Domingo. She was actually a guest of ours on episode 32. So this is just like a little network where we're going to be like exchanging promos and just sharing our podcasts basically with listeners of other podcasts on the network. So yeah, we've got one from Beyond Approach for you guys. So yeah, Sally, roll the clip. This is Stephanie. And Tux. <laughs> from the podcast Beyond Reproach, a show about political scandals from American history. But it's fun, we swear. The idea behind our show is that politicians and government officials are meant to be public servants. And their behavior should be beyond reproach. But if history has taught us anything, it's that a lot of politicians are total scumbags. So we decided to do a show where we drink period-appropriate historic cocktails while exploring some of the government scandals and shitty politicians of America's past. We are not historians. We're just a couple of drunks who never shut up and love history. We hope you'll join us on Beyond Reproach for some big facts, good laughs, a little bit of swearing, a lot of drinking, and a real good time. America's history is juicy. We just add gin. Yep. Big thanks to uh, Stephanie and Tux over at Beyond Reproach. Go check out their podcast. Links to that will be in the description. And yep, back to the episode with Hannah. It says star signs in the topic list. So what December star sign? It's Sagittarius. And which one are you? I don't know if this is a legit topic we're talking about because I know some people are going to be fuming. <laughs> I don't know why everyone gets so annoyed about it. It's, a real, it's an astrological, mathematical, real fact. There's always boys that come for you that, oh, why are you this star sign? It's not a real thing. While they're actually creating like little outfits for themselves and managing a fake football team on FIFA. And they want to at me for... I feel, I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> why is it a... So let's, let's pretend I'm uneducated on the matter. I mean, you're not. Why is it a mathematical and thing? Because, you know, like, how you get the sun and how it's like 365 days and like 60 minutes in an hour. That's all like to do with the sun and the moon and the stars and how it's aligned. So it's the mm-hmm. same thing just with like start birth charts and the location of where you're born and how the stars are aligned on your personality. It's not bullshit. Yeah. And all the calendars are, to be honest, based on the, I guess, the orbit of the sun as well. But what, I don't understand why though it translates to a personality. It's like, you know how... A human body is like 80 something, 78% water. And you know, the sun and where the moons are and the stars are controls like the where the moon is controls the tides. So then why would it not control you if you're 78% water? I did, I did come up with our facts and figures. What, uh, okay, let's, let's find out what each vase are. Cause in your, in your Instagram bio or name, Hannah, you've got like three different ones. Yeah. But don't you only have one? I already know mine. I think she's trying to say that if she has three in us, I think she might be saying that she's only compatible with them three or something like that. There was a time where I would literally reject boys based on their star sign. <laughs> what boys would you reject? No, they come up to you, they're like, oh, that you chat and then um, you vibe, but then I'm like, so what's your star sign? And then would just reject based on that. <laughs> Great, like, okay, see you later. So what's, what's your star sign? My sun sign is Cancer. And then I have like, you have your moon and your rising. Oh, wait, what? There's different ones. There's, everyone has three. Oh, okay. That, ex- that explains your three then. Okay. So how can I find out what my, what's the first one? What's the main one? The sun sign. So that's the one everyone knows. That's, that's the main one. Yeah. Yeah. And what's yours? Cancer. Okay. I'm cancer too. What's yours, Hamish? Gemini. Gemini. I don't know how you say it. Like, I don't know the correct way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Gemini. Okay. Let's, let's go cancer first. What's, do you know a good website where you can find like. Yeah. You go on CoStar. CoStar. Yeah. Co-star astrology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to know like where when you were born and where you were born. Oh, is it that deep? Where? Yeah. In it. Like to the minute you need to know. So I know like to the minute when I'm born. But like but and that does that affect what sun sign you are? Probably not your sun, but the other signs it might. Okay. But will this give me It'll be fairly accurate. So you actually have different sun different signs in different houses. So you have your Neptune house, your Uranus house, Moon house. What are the houses? Your sun sign and your Mars sign are like cancer. So we would be cancer. There's different things. So there's like, there's one that like, the obviously like 
had an experience. You know, like in the solar system, how you get like Pluto at the back and that yeah. ages to ground. So that takes like everyone for the past 10 years is going to be the same Pluto sign. Your Pluto house will be the same for everyone. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, so for Cancer, yeah, I've got Cancer Sun guys and gals are emotionally vulnerable, sometimes with aloof outer defenses. They side wind, sidewind into friendships and avoid full frontal engagement until there's absolute trust. Well, I swear I've read this before and it wasn't anything like that. <laughs> this is, do you know what like the cancer like kind of meaning is? Like broadly. Cancer, you're generally quite a nurturing person. You're quite very sensitive in emotions and you tend to be quite, quite a homemaker. That's why the sign is a cancer. <laughs> it's a home wrecker, I'll tell you that. <laughs> nah, nah, enough of that, enough of that. So do you think that applies to you? Do you think yeah, like those descriptions do? Sure. That's why the sign is a crab because it carries its home with it. The cancer sign's a crab. Uh, okay, I always wanted to be a Leo just because I thought Leo sounded a bit cooler. Like it just sounds cool. But it's so interesting that like all my really, really good friends are Leos. Why are cancer and Leos like compatible or something? Yeah, you tend to be compatible with the two signs next to you. So Leo okay. and I think... Yeah, because Hamish is born not too far yeah, before I'm, me. Yeah, I'm 19 June. See, you guys are friends. See? Oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> oh, right. I want to I like disprove it. Yeah, but I, thought, it, it I, ain't thought, I thought it would disprove it. Yeah, because I did Yeah, fair enough. Okay, wait, let me find a Gemini Honestly, definition. Yeah. I, I can see the messages from Nisha. <laughs> as soon as he hears this episode, he's going to be fuming at us. Yeah. <laughs> Expressive and quick-witted. Gemini represents two different personalities. Oh, shit, that is me. Hmm, I don't know about that. <laughs> it represents two different personalities in one, and you will never be sure which one you will face. That's <laughs> like if you if you find like the roadman or the, the nice guy, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they are sociable, communicative, communicative, and ready for fun, with a tendency to suddenly get serious, thoughtful, and restless. They are fascinated with the world itself, extreme, extremely curious, with a constant feeling that there is not enough time to experience everything they want to see. I don't know about the sociable aspect. Um, I don't think I'm a very sociable person. Obviously, if you know me, I think well, we're li- vibing to the same music or so. I'm social. You do have a podcast though. Which okay, kind of, yeah, uh... the podcast here kind of just gives us the front, yeah. But I don't think I'm that sociable. I don't think I'm approachable. For example, like people would always just think I'm a like, character that's not approachable. But when they get to know me, they're like, "Oh yeah, maybe he's a bit funny. You know, he's witty." I'll take the wit. Um, for example, I can agree with that. Well, I don't remember what else was said. But basically, you know, a common question that someone was throwing in a group chat when we were talking about star signs not too long ago was, why are they so generic? And why does it basically say everyone can match into every category? Because people only look at their sun signs. That's it. They don't understand the rest of it. They don't delve into it and look at like in depth their birth chart. They're just like, oh, cool. I could be witty too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I want to read the cancer one out from that website because that was a lot better. Cancer is deeply intuitive and sentimental. Cancer can be one of the most challenging zodiac signs to get to know. They are very emotional and sensitive and care deeply about matters of the family and their home. (laughs) Cancer is sympathetic and attached to people they keep close. Those born with their son in cancer are very loyal and able to empathize with other people's pain and suffering. You think you're sensitive? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. So I, I do think that like does match me a lot. But I feel like... As Hamish said, if I read like another star sign or sun sign, I'd also feel like that matches me a bit. Read well. chorus or something really quickly. What do you think? Do you have any star sign that you like hate? Like literally, I will see people on Instagram, like a like a random, random influencer that I follow. I really just don't like her vibe or energy. And then I'll go in her bio and it'll be like Scorpio. I'm like, no. Wow. Do you have any? Do you have any names? Any names? Oh. Yeah. The, as in, I, she's just, I don't know her. I just. Her energy is weird. Her name is Rukaya. It's she's on Instagram. She's like, I still follow her. I really like her, but I just there's something about her energy. I'm like, I don't just the vibe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna start beefing people based on their star signs as well. No. Okay, Scorpios. It says Scorpio born are passionate and assertive people. They are determined and decisive and will, will research until they find out the truth. Scorpio is a great leader, always aware of the situation, and always features prominently in resourcefulness. Um, Aaron, what is the like? date range so is it like for example jan 20 to um october the 23rd to november the 21st shit my my mum and dad are both scorpios <laughs> <laughs> just shots fired <laughs> <laughs> yeah so any any october to november born people 
it's, it's dead out here for you. Oh, wait, I, I'll try not to be friends with them. I have one Scorpio friend. That's it. What made you like get into all this in the like beginning? I don't know. I just really like, like I've always liked it. I feel like it tells you so much about you as, per- as a person. Like I even do, all, I know it's probably some of you like, you're going to hate me for this. <laughs> I, I do all these like card read, like tarot card reading, card reading type. I've mm-hmm. like. Oh, like do you do them or like do you get them done? Do you I do- pay to have them. Okay. And everyone's like, why do you pay that much money? But yeah. It's actually crazy how much they can tell. Do they tell you good stuff or do they tell you bad stuff? Always a mix. They can't tell you if you're going to die, but they can tell you everything. Is there anything that they've told you that you would share like now? So they told me that I was going to meet somebody. And at this point, I was like on this men are trash thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to like for five years. I'm never going to do this again. That was on this thing. And um, she was like. Custom kits on FIFA and everything. Fuck them. (laughs) And she was like. He might, because they can only tell you what they see, and it might not always how they interpret it versus how it might be might be different. But she was like, I think he might be like Turkish because I keep being shown like Turkish food and coffee cups and this, that, and the other. And then I was like, okay, cool. And I tend to forget about the stuff, so I listen to it like six months on, one year on, and just to see what actually happened. And then I actually met this guy, and then we dated. But he, um, it was a Turkish restaurant. Wait, did you meet a guy or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like after, like. A month after this, forgot about that whole, like, in detail what she said. But she, like, pinpointed his height to, like, a two-inch range. And it fit. Like, every, or every description, every star sign she get, like, everything fit. What was the height? It was 5'10". 5'10", okay. Sorry, Aaron, you don't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to, I was always curious by the card thing. You know, when they always did the card thing, yeah, but I just obviously I, I refused to pay someone to do that. But I was always curious by it. I don't know. How do they, how do they flip three cards? They just want to get your energy on the cards. Okay. Like you shuffling them puts your energy on it. Oh, I shuffle them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're with them, they'll shuffle and you'll pick whatever cards you, you're more drawn towards. So it's more just getting your energy on it. It doesn't like whatever card you put doesn't mean anything. So do you not think that you were like, in this back of your mind, you were like maybe going to like an extra Turkish restaurant a month or something, trying to find this Turkish guy. No, because she thought he was going to be a Turkish guy. So I yeah. was like, oh, okay. And this actual restaurant, I didn't want to go this night. My brother wanted to go, but he hadn't met up with these people in a while. And he was like, oh, please come on me, please come on me. I was at home in an Adidas tracksuit with my hair greased up. I was, I was, I didn't want to go. I was uploading pictures to Instagram. I didn't care. And he was like, no, come just get showered and put on makeup and we'll go real quick. So I got ready in like five minutes and we left. I didn't even want to be there. Wait, but it happened. But it happened. Wow. <laughs> Wait, what, then what's, um, what about like tea leaves? Like in the like cup, like tea cup. Are you talking Harry that, find something where you're going to be like, oh no, but that's bullshit. <laughs> no, to be fair, I, d- I feel like tea leaves are a bit more legit than cards. I don't what? know why. Why is this tea leaf thing? Drink the tea and then whatever's in the bottom of the cup, but I've never done it. Why are you against that? It just doesn't seem legit. <laughs> but why does, why, why, why does the card one seem legit then? <laughs> why you get your energy on it with a teacup? I'm just putting my saliva on something. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, but my yeah, energy is coming through the saliva. Oh, come so, on, you uh, learned about this stuff five minutes ago. How did you? <laughs> yeah. no, I was going to say, yeah, someone could argue the card thing is down to probability. Yeah. Whereas the tea thing is like, I don't even know how you'd explain the tea thing. Like, And the, uh, the tea thing was also in Peaky Blinders. And, uh, and I like that TV show. Yeah, anything that was set in Birmingham does not sound legit to me. <laughs> uh, that's also true, to be fair. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could ever... So... You know what you have in like the newspapers like every day? Horoscopes. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Yeah. But isn't that like star signs as well? Yeah, but it's just your sun sign. That doesn't mean anything. So sun signs are bullshit? No, no, no. But within each sun sign, you have like different personalities. So you have to go and look at your other signs and look at that combination. There's like different ones within one sun sign. Yeah, yeah. So what are yours? I don't think we'll be able to. Me and Hamish probably don't know our like birth dates to exact in this app i can put my size my birth chart and you can put yours and then we can become friends on the app and we can actually see in which areas right. of our life we're compatible so it's like a social network yeah yeah so you can see if you're compatible in friendship in love in communication 
Honestly, Coastal should just like sponsor me. I'm responsible for like 97% of those downloads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's, they, oh, this website even has like famous, like famous people with uh, the cancer sign. Ariana Grande, Hamish, you like her? I don't, I don't recognize any of the other names. So, so what's, well, well, wait, what's your one? Uh, cancer Aquarius for us. Okay. So what's the Aquarius? What sign is that? Moon. The moon is to do with like your emotions and your moods and your feelings. Okay. So what does Aquarius mean for that? I'll just read it out for you. It says, this is yeah, okay. the sign you most think of as yourself since it reflects your personality. Meaning your emotional self is intuitive, observant, detached, and rational. You're often in your own world, but are scared of how you truly feel. And do you, do you agree with all that? I think I'm quite a rational person, but I don't know a girl that thinks that they're a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, and then the other one was the house one, yeah. did you say? No, they're all house ones. You have, okay, okay. Um, ascendant, ascendant is Koraz. So your ascendant is the mask you present to people. It can be seen in your personal style and how you come off to people when you first meet. Some say <laughs> it becomes less relevant as you get older. It changes every two hours. So if it doesn't make sense, text your mum and find your birth time. Your ascendant is in Taurus, meaning you come across as highly attuned to practical material matters, especially pleasure. And But the same materially gives people the impression that you're reliable, settled, sensible, and deliberate, though sometimes stubborn. So that that's what other people think of you. Yeah, yeah, like your mask, what people first think of you when they see Yeah, okay. All right, so, okay, so I think, it shows on the page. So I'm not waiting for an email. Basically, mine is, I think, Sun, Gemini, 11th house, I think. The thing is, I see the quick witty stuff here, but at the end it says, it's in your 11th house, meaning you feel the need to distinguish yourself from others through social status, including platonic and casual friends, along with your hopes, wishes, and dreams. So I know Aaron will love the social status thing, considering how much I joke about it. All right, so I filled it in, and it says this down here. So Sun, Gemini. Yeah, and then ascendant, that's your right. So Leo is your rising. So the mask, the mask you show people, like what people first think of you when they first see you. Leo meaning you come across as bright, good natured and magnetic. Your energy makes you seem either like a know-it-all or a live wire, but always the center of attention. No, not center of attention. The live wire, I can understand. So the moon, what is the moon? Oh, my, this is my moon. So my moon is also Leo. So this is what you think of yourself. Like your emotions, moods, and feelings are what you actually are as a person. It says, meaning your emotional self. Oh, dramatic, mate. Proud, <laughs> expensive, idealistic, and somewhat self centered. You need a lot of love, care, and validation from other people. That's wrong. <laughs> no, that, that's totally Hamish. That's no, no, what, no, 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 I'm, not having this, I'm not having that run yet. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I do not. Hey, need fucking that. drama queen over here. <laughs> me? <laughs> Aaron Palmer. You find security and safety through privacy, secrets, and introspection mm-hmm. okay the secrecy i can understand so now <laughs> this next part is mercury is what exactly it determines how you communicate talk and think and process information okay how you learn see dynamic quick-witted yeah curious about everything energy is often scattered in a million directions like i don't know what that means by energy what does it mean by my energy right now like you'll be like thinking about this and then thinking about that okay yeah so yeah I, that is true overthinking a lot always the way you speak is articulate and witty i can agree with that Articulate? Are you mad? <laughs> if, if you're calling me a drama queen, I'm sticking with articulate. <laughs> to be fair, my recent um, interview feedback was that I was very good communicating, really good with communicating. Right. Who was that? You love witty banter. You may have trouble deepening your relationships. You tend to be a bit timid and discreet with your crushes. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that? You know who you are listening. Shut up, Aaron. What? <laughs> That's oh, funny throwing me under the bus. I can't wait to read yours. <laughs> wait, so I, I don't know it. my time, so I, I don't know. Okay. Do. Right, Mars. Mars is... Wait, so you only had three, Hannah. So what are all... There's like loads here. Yeah, there's loads, but those are like the main three. Okay. Really, really lovely. Oh, shit. So we're past the main three, I see. So it mines was Gemini, Leo, Leo. Yeah. I'm going to have to read through this later. You've got my curiosity at all time high right now. <laughs> uh, Aaron doesn't know his birth time, so we're going to have to live without that. Yeah, yeah, but I, I just assume it says like I'm awesome. Stubborn as shit. I can, I can probably tell you that one. One of the, all three of them should say stubborn fire. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. Do your, do your family like believe in all that 
stuff as well? I don't think my mom does. My dad does. My dad actually paid to have like this thing done where you can find out what you were in your last life. Okay. And he thought it was really cool. And then he got his results. And then it was like, you were a shepherd. And my mom was like, (laughs) you're a fucking shepherd. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but a, sh- a shepherd could have been cool, you know. Wait, what exactly is like, a shepherd? For people like me, they like herding sheep and that. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. But back in the day, like a shepherd was probably like a top drop, you know. That was like roadman of the farm. Yeah, exactly. I thought dogs could do it. They have a dog to like help, I think. Okay, but a, a dog can't like keep track of all the sheep. <laughs> what kind of dog is this? <laughs> okay, that's mad. So everyone else, make sure you go check out the website. Use Hannah's code. She doesn't have a code yet. You know, soon come. <laughs> but you know, um, I'd like you all to actually close all your tabs regarding Star Science because that's actually part of my quiz today. So yeah, we I have the end of 2020 quiz. It's ca- it's late 2020 in one way or the other. So yeah, let's start with the first question. Which UK artist had a number one album in the official charts in October? Option A, Dua Lipa with Future Nostalgia. Option B, Heady One with Edna. Option C, Megan Thee Stallion with Sugar. And option D, Dave Psychodrama. A number one album, did you say? They're yeah. all albums, right? I can see Hannah Googling as well. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> he, he accuses everyone of Googling, Hannah. Don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, cancers are stubborn, you see. Oh, oh sorry. You, oh, you're right. The answer to me, I see. Okay, so what have you both gone with? How do you want? Yeah, I've gone Edna. Yeah, both of you are actually correct. I wasn't expecting Aaron to get that, to be honest. But What do you mean? Heady One's my boy. <laughs> and yeah just a quick fact check for people um, Dua Lipa's album came out in April um, that's when it charted number one Megan Thee Stallion is not even from the UK and Dave's Psychodrama is a 2019 album cool alright the next one switching the vibes a bit <laughs> which of the following countries went into lockdown first Spain Greece UK or Italy oh. could both of you reveal your answers Hannah first I got Italy I went Greece one of you is right any guesses to who's, who's thinking they're right? Who's confident on the answer? I don't know. I wrote Greece because I thought it was Greece. So, and I assume Hannah wrote Italy because she thought it was Italy. <laughs> Wait, how do you know what she wrote? Like. Because she just said. Oh, okay. Sure. No, because it's like coming from China, which is like that way. So I feel like. Italy had like loads of cases, but I feel like Greece got on top of it. Like Greece managed to control it. So I feel like they might have done it quicker. I don't yeah, know. Okay. okay, well, the dates was. Okay, Spain was 14th March. Greece and UK were 23rd March. Mm. Now Italy was 9th March. Hey. So who won? Uh, I need a quick, quick Hannah. Dates, quick maths. Hannah, okay. Also, all the facts are correct as of the time of recording. So if anyone has an issue with any of the facts on these, you can go suck your mum. I mean, I feel like that question wasn't something that would change now. You know, yeah. that's kind of something that's happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the next one. Who won the 2020 US elections in November? Is it Donald Trump, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, or Vladimir Putin. I hope you want to reveal your answer. Biden. President-elect Joe Biden. All right. Question four. Which star sign would you be if you were born between 20th Jan and 16th February? Is it Aquarius, <gasps> Libra, Leo, or Sagittarius? That is the quickest answer I've ever given in my life. Do, do you know all the star signs off my heart? As in I learned the traits and then I know certain people that are those traits and then it stays in my head. Okay. I can rule out two to be fair. Because we've mentioned two and like their rough dates on this episode already. Yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't happen by this point. Um, what, what did both of you go for? Aquarius. I went Aquarius. Bang, bang. <laughs> it was a trick question. The answer's Capricorn, but you both got it wrong. So well done. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, Hannah, you must feel a bit bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hannah like sent it right away as well. Hannah like submitted her answer. Like, you know? Wow, that's actually rude, Hamish. How can you give a trick Gosh, question? I'm there. <laughs> what, did you not think it was going to be a proper serious quiz? Come on. Right. I, I gave, I was just like Aquarius begins with an A. A is first of the alphabet. You know, January That was like almost first. broad logic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you triggered it. <laughs> Had, you still got it wrong, so I'm not even taking that. Oh. Yeah. Um, next question. What month was Aaron's trim on point? January, July, it's always fresh or it's always been shit. I just saw his face here. For those of you, you don't have video, but everyone, he, he, he faced. Wait, 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 what is it? What are the uh, options? January, July. It's always been fresh. And the last one has always been shit. All right, go ahead. Um, read out your answers, starting with Hannah. <laughs> it's always shit. <laughs> what do you mean? You've only just met. 
Okay, I put January because like July it wasn't because it was in lockdown, so it wasn't looking good. So by that logic as well, it it hasn't like always been fresh either because July was a bit tough. They don't get gas. The answer was always been shit. So <laughs> no, no, January was January was good. I started off the year good. All right, the next one is when did the UK Black Lives Matter protest start? First of June, second of June, twenty eighth May, or thirtieth May? Is this a trick question? No. Okay. Any answers? I'm in 30th of May. Yeah. And Hannah? 2nd June. Okay, both of you are wrong. Um, <gasps> the answer was actually 28th May. Uh, final one. Which of the following is an emerging brand you should go follow? Option A, The Ragged Apron. Option B, Dana Bakes. Option oh, C, wow. Loki. Option D, The Third Wheel. Do both of you want to reveal your answer? I went The Third Wheel. I went The Ragged Apron. Yeah, so this one's actually an, a good question. So it's, uh, it's you know, points all around. So yeah, go for all of those people. There's <laughs> a clear winner by three points. Clear? Yeah, they've gone clear. The points are 6-9. Oh, shout out 6-9. Yeah, okay. I left you your dead joke to make. All right, now the winner with nine points is Hannah. Guest always wins. Woo! Insert sound nah. effects. Insert sound effects and edit. No, outrageous. The uh, To be fair, I'm, I'm just I'm just gassed that Hannah got the uh, star sign question wrong. <laughs> January is a dead month anyway. No one wants to be with anyone that's born in January. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I back Isn't that. that like two Actually, no, I don't, I don't back that. I don't back that. But um, anyway, last question in that. Hamish mentioned and you voted for the Ragged Apron. Yeah. Would you like to tell people like basically what that is? What is the Ragged Apron? Yeah. So during lo- like my sister always used to bake a lot. And I like in the beginning, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was so shit. Like I remember going home <laughs> to Leicester once and I was hungry and my mom gave me some cake and I spat. I was like, well, who, where did you get this cake from? Why did you pay for this? <laughs> And she's like, your sister made it. And I was like, oh, shit. And then we, like, amused the idea and just humoured her. And then it got better. And then it got to a point where people were asking, oh, can you make this? Can you make that? And then I was bored over lockdown. And I did a lot of internships in, like, marketing, advertising, social media anyway. I was like, let me, let me just make this into a business. And then it became a thing. It was just supposed to be fun. And it's been going on for, like, six months now. Okay. We have a logo and an Instagram page and meetings. And it's just become a thing. So Meetings, really? What? Yeah, we sit down after work and we have like ragged apron meetings. And Oh, I thought you meant with like investors or something like that. Or, like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Lord Sugar or something. <laughs> no, I'm like, I work out all the prices and we write down everything expensive. Like, it's just a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you have like any like passion for baking or anything? I I taste test. So there's always something and something going on. So today we were doing cake donuts and we're making like product shots for our Christmas box. So I was eating the cake. My my sister actually, so the second person that Hamish mentioned in that last question, Dana Bakes, that's my sister. Ah. So she's got like a baking kind of business going as well, where she does like, yeah, cookies or cakes or donut cakes or whatever. So uh, yeah, little little competition there. She charges a lot though. So if you want to undercut her, yeah, right. charge charge good <laughs> prices. Yeah, I'm so bad that I don't I don't as in I do pay for it sometimes, but I just get to eat all the leftover and then I'm like, <laughs> is it is the business like split? So you help out with like the finances and social media or something? Do you get like profits? I told her she would keep the profit. I don't really care. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been like growing? Uh, yeah, it's great. As in, it kind of like dipped. Because I was busy and she was busy, and then we were, then we picked up again like in the last two weeks. Because then, if I'm entitled to have profits, she'll be like, "You need to do this, and you need to do this." And I don't want to be held accountable. I mm-hmm. provide service. If anyone gets like food poisoned, you don't want to be. I'm, I'm not. I'm not here for that. Yeah, is it something that you think will like you and your sister, or even just your sister, you will like continue to like grow it? Yeah, I definitely think it's something that's going to carry on. I don't feel like if you're going to do something. As a hobby, you may as well make a little bit from it, or at least not like make a loss. So yeah, yeah. but is it something like even post lockdown, you think you'll keep up? Yeah, I just I feel like it's definitely growing as a business, and it's kind of cool to have a a name and an Instagram page and have something that you can call yours rather than just being like, oh yeah, I bake. Like it's a legit thing. Really quickly regarding marketing, if you're giving out free marketing advice, what's some free marketing advice for the third wheel? TikTok like instagram reels are like oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> everybody's because not many people are doing it so if you do it and put it on instagram 
because Instagram mm-hmm. Reels is really new. It puts you to the top of the Explore page. With the old algorithm, you would stay your picture would stay on the Explore page for like weeks and weeks. And now it's really, really hard to go on the Explore page. But because Instagram Reels is like the new TikTok and not many people are doing it, it puts you to the top of the Explore page for weeks. Yeah, we've been told that by other people as well. But what, what as a podcast, what could we do like as a reel or like a TikTok? That's where the, I think the trouble is. What do you guys do on the Ragged Apron for like reels? You do a close up of like one brownie. And then like, so the other day we had like individual package samples because we give out samples. And so I showed one sample and then you like film yourself putting it down. When you zoom out, there's like loads of samples. And just to make it look aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I just feel like if you do like, a little video, a little snippet, but instead of uploading it as a video, upload it as a reel. Yeah. I don't know. It'd have to be, I feel like it'd have to be a video from this like video chat. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, if anyone wants to do it on our behalf, holla at us and I'm sure we can sort <laughs> something out. Yeah, see, the problem is Hamish is a bit of a no face, no case kind of guy. Yeah. So that doesn't really work with you. You could just have like the third wheel, like the actual, um, like, you know, your Instagram page logo thing, like, and then you guys just talking in the background and then it like cuts to like, promo music like whatever theme music you guys use mm, interesting so basically we have like two video settings one is your sticker one is my st- sticker and every time you talk we put it on your sticker every time i talk we put it on my sticker and then every time we both are talking or laughing over each other we put both stickers but it's legit like 15 seconds oh, shit. Is, is reels 15 seconds uh, it can be a lot for longer, but I feel like just, yes, yeah, like people has like attention span of like. Yeah. But that's cool anyway. We actually, one of our friends, you know, Z, Zishan. Yeah. He, I, I saw he shared the uh, Ragged Apron, some like brownies he got from them. Yeah. This week, actually. So it's like a bit of a coincidence that we were recording at the same time. Wasn't he eating it when we were on the call with him? Yeah. Yeah. He was eating, eating a brownie as well at the same time. What was his real review? Oh, he, he said it was shit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, no, no, he said it was really good. He said it was like uh, really gooey because he asked for it to be gooey. Yeah. When I do that, I eat brownies and cake or like frosting for breakfast every single day. I'm not even joking. I've done that once before. I've eaten cake in the morning. I know, you know what? I eat cake in the morning, to be honest. I eat it usually after someone's birthday because there'll be cake for the morning. I'm like, obviously, I'm going to have it in the morning. It doesn't, sit, it doesn't sit well with me, but, you know, it's just so nice to have a cake in the morning. And then you can feel shit afterwards about losing your productivity because you just ate something so bad. I remember reading somewhere that cake for breakfast is actually good. Or is it? The sugar like, does make your metabolism first thing in the morning. Yeah, it's better than eating it in the evening in a way. Yeah. Eating it oh. first thing in the morning is better than eating it in the evening. I have such a sweet tooth. I always like eat chocolate or cake or something sweet first thing in the morning. There is no way. Can you explain to me how a sweet tooth works? Because I don't understand when people say they have a sweet tooth, I don't know what that means. I tried Googling it. I didn't understand what Google was trying to tell me. You just like crave sugar. Yeah. It just means you, you like sweet food. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's cool. You mentioned there as well, like you had some experience in like advertising and like marketing and stuff. Yeah. Where does that like come from? So I did my degree in my finance accounting and I graduated and absolutely hated that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to do this. I knew I wanted to do like marketing advertising that kind of area so I did loads of um internships and some of them were really cool so I worked in fairly big advertising company and yeah I worked with on the the after like the after research of the John Lewis advert which is like top secret like super top secret like it got leaked one year so I didn't have they had like certain people had passwords to get into certain rooms and it was so top secret it was really crazy so the Hamish do you know the John Lewis stuff I hear about Christmas it, but I don't actually know what, like, you know, the hype. I don't get it because I feel like that's for people with money. <laughs> no, 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 it's for people with a TV. So maybe, <laughs> maybe people with money. Basically, John, basically every Christmas, there's almost like a bit of a competition with who can make the like best Christmas ad from like various kind of retail stores. And John Lewis is typically, I think John Lewis might have been the first one who kind of made it a thing. And basically John Lewis is the top one or considered to be the top one like most years so what what one what was the advert that you were that you worked on which one was that yeah it was the dragon one with edgar edgar the dragon okay yeah yeah i remember it vaguely but uh yeah i can't remember but that's quite exciting though because that's like a massive project yeah the man on the moon one and the the one with lily allen's song with the the little animals that was really cool but yeah for something like because 
in terms of like marketing, that's like a massive marketing campaign, like maybe the biggest of their year, probably John Lewis. Why is there such a big fuss around Christmas adverts? Like what is what makes this advert so, you know, like sensational? It just makes them like iconic and it just makes them seem like really British and like they like all this like family orientated things rather than being like business orientated and then people like that and they tend to buy from it more. Yeah. And it has become a bit of a competition, I think. So they're probably just trying to get like just say theirs is the best one this year. And then Christmas, like the marketing around Christmas, you want to get people buying for like Christmas presents and stuff like that. So uh it's always always good. But no, is that something you kind of do you want to stay in the advertising and marketing space? Yeah. So this like this week's been so busy. I've just been doing like those assessments and interviews and hopefully it all kind of works out. But yeah, the advertising like industry got hit really hard by um COVID, so it's not the best time to be like, let me start my career in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So how has the job hunting process been like during COVID? It's okay. Like, I've still had interviews and stuff, so it's not been that bad. But obviously, it's a bit different doing interviews on Zoom versus doing them in real life. But that's another thing. I feel like when they do it on in real life, I, as some sometimes I feel like when you go in person, they kind of see what you're like, and then I really honestly feel like pretty privilege is a thing, like when you're in person. Okay, yeah. This this is one of our like debate questions that we've had like sitting there. Have you used pretty privilege to your advantage, then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but why would you not? So, like, you know, when you go to those like high end clubs that like I went to Liberty and stuff, they literally will look at you up and down and judge you based on how you your dress and how you look and then let you in based on that well so they make it obvious they're doing that yeah i've been to clubs where they split you in a line down the line boys and girls one side and boys one side girls on another side and they literally come down look at you and then take you in based on like how pretty you are if the girls who are like dress in heels go first then it's like anyone that's just wearing heels then a few boys and then they kind of mix it up like that so what if you're like you know, like a beautiful looking girl, but you're not wearing heels. You're just wearing some pair of trainers. Go home. Go home. Nah. Because you have to get a rep, a club rep to get you in. So when I text club reps like a week in advance, if I want to go to these clubs, they literally tell you, don't wear like hoop earrings, wear a dress, wear heels. They tell you how to dress. Don't wear earrings. Don't wear no hoop, no hoop earrings. Why, why is that a thing? It's considered like almost chavvy. Okay. Oh wait, so when you say hoop, are you talking about the ones that stretch your ears out or the ones that like the normal hoop? Like normal hoop. Big oh, okay, because I thought the other one was big. Heavy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're talking about like the massive ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I generally think pretty privilege is a thing. I haven't like really I don't know, yeah. I I don't really know. So you know the brand Hermes? It's like Chanel. I've heard it. It's a Drake bar. Hermes link. Ice blue oh, right, Richie, yeah. Part of my ribs. Like I do not know what permanent is. The Alchester from Drake. Wait, I carry on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they re- they can literally pick and choose who they sell certain items to. So if you walk in and you're not you're pretty or whatever, they can based on that, plus they'll look at your account and see like if you've bought previous things to see if you have money as well as being pretty, and then they'll they'll be like, Yeah, we have stuff available. If you just walk in looking like a tramp, they'll be like, nah. We don't have anything, so no, 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 okay. Now that gives me a good story from so the fragrance shop. Yeah, when I was first starting at like my main job, yeah, I walked in. Yeah, so obviously you could probably tell I'm not dressed. I'm not usually. I'm not dressed formally. I guess as formally or you know as what you call high class enough to be looking like I'm going to purchase something. So when I was trying out, I said I'm new, like perfumes and because I was upgrading in life. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, okay, I like this one, this one, this one, yeah. And they looked at me. I'm pretty sure they weren't going to, they didn't put the bottles or the packages on the thing. I'm pretty sure they weren't going to sell to me. And then I just pulled out the Amex and put it on you. And then I'm like, oh shit. And then, yeah, and then, yeah, they were like, oh, suddenly offering me all these other things. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good, yeah. But then um, my friend that was with me at the time decided to take free, other free samples and stuff. But yeah, I'm like, bro, do what you got to do. Yeah, I don't care. But like, I remember they would, I'm pretty sure they weren't going to sell to us, yeah. Yeah, if I didn't basically pay for those like upfront. But then I think every time I come, now that I know what I want exactly, I'm pretty sure they they have no issues with it in terms of that. And I think it was also because of the brand. I'm not going to say the brand because I'm going to get, everyone's going to start taking a piss out of me <laughs> if I ever expose the brand of the clones. Are, the two times that they made me test for other perfumes or whatever, 
they actually said that you have a pretty unique taste. So like, try this, try this. So every time I go, like, I I have to, I have to get lucky if it's in stock because the stock I have to buy multiple. I'm not gonna say the brand. I'm not gonna say the brand on it, and I'm not gonna say tell it to Aaron because Aaron is just waiting to <laughs> to get me <laughs> slewed in every single group chat. Mate, I, I probably just you're probably just spending the peas, you know. Bro, Aaron, I've seen I've seen your like perfume collection, fam. You have like twenty, fam. So don't, <laughs> you can't. Have me. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't claim every day that I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think it's it's a tough like I think it's a tough like subject because I think it's very hard to argue that it doesn't exist. Like it does exist. People do. There are lots of people out there that in like job scenarios or like, as you mentioned, like club scenarios or even shop scenarios. I didn't know about the shop scenarios. That's a bit mad. Where they'll tend to prefer people who are like considered just prettier. You know, Kurt Geiger, I'm not going to make these direct accusations, but when I used to work at Dublin, but people like Kurt Geiger and a few of the beauty and makeup brands, they'd only hire, I'm pretty sure they only hired them if they thought they were pretty, um, at least for their age. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely exists. Um, but I think it's hard to like always. You could have like a really pretty person, and they could have got employed or got something based on the merit. But a lot of people just assume they got it based on their looks. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like it's always a bit awkward. I mean, I don't go around telling people to make the accusation yeah. all the time. Yeah. They still needed the skill to get the job, like. But you know, the prettiness gave them advantage over the next person. That, that may have had the same skills. You're saying that if someone gave me a job based on prettiness, I would take it. I, every time I fill out an application, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. brown, I'm this, I'm that. I feel like every diversity yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't say like, I don't think you should not take it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, yeah, think that. Aaron, have you ever been declined for a job because you've not been pretty enough? I don't know. Maybe. Uh-huh. Like, honestly, I have, I have no idea. Do you? You don't really know that, do you? But like... Yeah, I, I, uh, it's so on Zoom they can still kind of see you're pretty. Are you trying to say like they're not they're just unable to check your figure out or something like that? Is that what you're trying to say? Possibly, or maybe it's like the way you dress or the way you carry yourself, or just like that level of confidence. But another thing is like when I used to live on campus in Queen Mary on in my like morning lectures, I used to literally go in like borderline pajamas and no one would offer me a seat and it was just like awful and then I'd like go home get dressed a little better then like you know go library for a bit come back from second lectures like afternoon lectures and everyone's like oh do you want a seat do do you want to come sit here is that is that a load of guys it depends like some it is like guys and girls I think girls are a little bit more judgy actually on based on who's free but um yeah as in some guys would be like, I'll come sit here. And some boys, they were like really super religious. So if I sat near them, they'd actually move away from me. Raw. Okay. <laughs> Wait, super religious? Wait, super religious? What do you mean by super religious? Like, like they don't believe in remixing. I remember at Queen Mary, they, used, there was, they signed a petition to try and make it like segregate the lecture hall to make it half girls and boys sit separately. But if they did that, in, it's like 20% girl. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, in computer science, it wouldn't have made any sense either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's there's loads more. Well, I feel like that we could go into pretty privilege, but it, it also depends as well. Like, I feel like it's really hard to define what is pretty. Do you know what I mean? So that's also, I feel like, another argument where people can use that, like it, it doesn't exist almost. Opinion is subjective, but pretty is just shaggable. <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> but, but like anyone could find anyone attractive. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's also based on like social things Like everyone on Instagram has like one yeah. big list. And then based on that, it's subject, like subconsciously goes into people's brains. So like what's mainstream and considered beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And my, my point actually doesn't mean it doesn't, doesn't exist or anything. It just means that I guess that it's more like if you've experienced it or not. I mean, would you say that you've seen, so you're saying you haven't seen it in action, I guess is what, is that what you're saying. No, no. You see it in action every day. Like just like, Likes on Instagram, for instance. Oh, someone is triggered. <laughs> or like something like that. No, no, no. That that's me triggered. But you you see it like. Oh shit! We were discuss- Do you want to discuss what we were saying just before this um thing started about the sticker clicks? Oh yeah. So we were saying like you know on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Or if, if when you make a story and you tag someone in it. Yeah. Like you put their at in it. Yeah, yeah. You can see like how many people have like clicked on that. Mm-hmm. So I was saying to Hamish like if he looks at that at any time. Because whenever we have a girl on the podcast, you can see that 
the number of people that have clicked on their, that girl's tag is so much higher than when we have like a guy on the podcast. And I was, I was just like, I am proud. all these horny fucks here. I mean, I, we always see it as well, like week in, week out. Yeah. So the difference between the girls and the guys being clicked. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, yeah, I guess it's even like in, like on social media and like podcasts and YouTube or something, you'd see like, every, okay, look, everyone we've had on the podcast has been beautiful people. Yeah. Oh, I went out there. They've all they've all been beautiful. That's not what you said the other day. Yeah, yeah, one one in particular. Wait, but, who? <laughs> <laughs> myself when I was on the podcast. Shut up. But you can you can you can see like sometimes you might have like even on YouTube thumbnails or something. Like, if people see like an attractive person in their thumbnail, that's what a lot of like the big YouTubers do. They'll they make them like forefront of the thumbnail because they're more clickable or something like that. Yeah. So they might just then in turn naturally get like more opportunities to do stuff like especially like media work or something so that's i guess is a privilege where it exists yeah so i was going to add on like this is kind of like a more abstract level concept of this yeah so there was a show called legion i watched for a bit yeah and it was like if you teach someone something entirely different from when they grow up they would their world would be entirely different so say yeah a child born tomorrow all you, you taught them that the color that we know as red today you taught them that that was blue and that the color we know as blue is red. All right. If you taught them that their entire life and taught other like flip concepts, they'd learn it that way. So like their definition of something else is going to end up being completely different because they've learned it in a completely different way. And that leads to a completely different set of possibilities. It could be like, we would consider opposite, but for them, that's normal because that's what they've learned and that's what they've been taught. So like if tomorrow suddenly someone turned around and somehow said that, Society usually defines as pretty, like, you know, the ge- the general pretty. If that wasn't pretty, if that was clapped, yeah. And the other, whatever they define as not pre- <laughs> clapped as pretty, then it would it would flip things, you know. But it would be so, like, such a dodgy concept to, like, I guess us, because we've grown up where this is defined as pretty and that is defined as clapped. I'm not saying we're actually saying that. I'm just saying this as an example as well, so no one get at me for that. <laughs> no, yeah, I get what you're saying, but that's, like, with trends. Like, it becomes in fashion to be like to be super skinny and then it becomes fashion to be more curvaceous like yeah it is ever changing and what people teach you to is pretty at the time yeah yeah. but it's it's interesting because i don't think yeah it's interesting that you've said that you have experienced it in a positive way pretty much yeah i don't don't think i've i will i don't know if i've experienced it either way i haven't felt like i've experienced it either way have you hamish at all definitely not and the other thing was that I wouldn't say pretty privilege. I'd say like when they realize that you can pay that privilege. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to be recognized as leave me, recognize me as what you recognized me as before. Now leave me alone. Cause now then, then you see it when, when you say we walk around Westfield with a fragrant shop bag, yeah, then people start to advertise to you more. Like you can see it. And you know, when the people that are standing around the store looking for people to sell their product to, they'll usually find people with the shopping things or people who look like they can pay for it. If you're carrying around already some Westfield bags, they're likely to advertise to you. Like I've noticed that. So like there's been times where I've been in Westfield, not carrying around anything, and people definitely do not approach. I don't think that's pretty privileged though. That's just but I like don't know. I don't even know oh, what yeah. to call that. Yeah, to be honest, that is not exactly pretty privileged. Yeah. Uh, were there any other instances where you've when you do when you have seen it yourself, Hannah, have you ever felt like do you like acknowledge it? As in do you like be like, okay, yeah, that's happened? Or is it kind of just like you just brush it off kind of thing? As in, I, I feel that it's happened and I know it's happened, but like, I was not a good looking kid, like growing up. So I know the difference. Okay. I know that you don't know me as a person. You've done, you've done this because of the way that I look. And that's like, it is a thing. But then you always get these people that also have this idea of you, oh, you're pretty. So you're going to be like, this is your personality and this is, they judge you and already make their, decide who you are as a person and that's not who i am so yeah because uh, yeah because you people who are considered like stereotypically pretty or whatever like the same people that were saying pretty privileged successful like you could also have like the stereotype that they're stuck up or something like that a lot of people might i guess consider so there is like a i don't know what the phrase is like double-winded sword or something two-edged two-edged sword i don't know something like that yeah but then I'm just very aware that they've done it like that. And I know that they're picking certain things for a club. I, as in, I kind of understand it for a club because they work for a club. They have to maintain that certain image. And I understand that. But it's like people that offer you seats in a lecture hall because you did your makeup and <laughs> brushed your hair a bit. It's like, 
It's probably, it's just it's just guys trying to chirps, to be honest. Wait, that didn't happen in Comsci, to be honest. <laughs> we had no girls in Comsci. Like it, it could it could have happened. And everyone in computer science is like too nice, so we'd just like move up or something. Yeah. I felt like Warwick it didn't feel I don't did that happen at Warwick in any lecture? Because we did have some bigger lectures, but I just don't feel like I don't know, maybe it happened and I was just like to be honest, I wasn't in half the lectures, so I can't even say for the lectures I did attend. I don't think it happened. <laughs> But yeah, cool. And uh, one one project that you've, I don't, well, I said project, but I don't even know if it's a project. But you've been tutoring recently. I was like a private tutor alongside doing my internships. And then when this whole coronavirus thing went, I was like, I know that no one's the whole hiring thing just shut down. Like no one hired, and every application that or interview I was supposed to have, they were just like, we're firing our people. We're not even hiring people. So I just needed to like do something, fill that time in the CV and like fill that gap. What was I going to write my CV? I was washing my hands. I needed to just like <laughs> fill that a bit. <laughs> I that actually jokes. Yeah. I was like the happy birthday song. I said, wash my hands. Great. So I joined an agency to tutor. So it's like you can tutor, go in and tutor and you can also tutor at home. Okay. So I do a bit of both and just these kids are just so funny. Like it just makes me die and they're so like brutally honest because they're like really really young Mm -hmm. so funny how old are the kids that you're tutoring so they are between three and 14 that's a big range yeah so super some of them are super young and they're just like so funny it's clear what what are some are there any good stories from it yeah i had a gut we were reading a book about so they do comprehension stuff so this girl's reading a book about climate change and she looked at me and she was like, excuse me. And I was like, yeah. She said, I have a question for the government. <laughs> and I said, honey, we all have questions for the government. <laughs> what was her question? <laughs> that if we are using paper bags instead of plastic bags or using less plastic when charging for it, we're not really helping the environment if we're still cutting down trees. So why- what did you say? Just agreed and just said just life just keep reading the book <laughs> <laughs> she just went uh yeah i'll get you that email you can you can she, write she, uh you can write an email yeah you should have encouraged her to write an email because otherwise then you're just like she actually thought outside the box that's mad i haven't even thought of it like that as well cutting down the trees all oh, right but to yeah. be honest a lot some of it is recycled to be fair so we have to give yeah what uh what kind of subjects are you covering just maths and english but like you don't know what you're gonna get so they can come to you with any part of the syllabus at just and just and you just have to know it. Yeah. Are you still doing it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it like Zoom ones now? Uh, yeah, Zoom. So like Zoom tutorials, Zoom workshops, one for one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is teaching like a potential path for you? Do you think? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I just, I'm not sympathetic enough to do <laughs> anything. No, cancers are supposed to be like sensitive and uh Oh right. If the kid's like a school kid, you've got come under there. I just I just don't have morals. I have like one moral. I don't have any morals. I don't really care. So <laughs> I mean, I couldn't do anything like NHSC or teacher or like anything government body ish. It's just no. <laughs> she sees someone's on the operating table and she's like, nah, I love it. They can die. Only if that's you, Hamish. <laughs> right. can, can leave you. Or you just check the star sign first and be like, what's, what's, what are their vibes? What are their energy saying? <laughs> what, what is their moon? But no, how did you get into tutoring? Uh, so I did it like privately just because I got, I was tutored a lot of my life. But I feel like the weirdest tutor, I had an elocution one, a handwriting one. I don't even An elocution one? Oh, what? It was the same, it was the same guy. So they teach you how okay. to write properly and they'd legit get like a ruler and like measure your letters and stuff. And they would like, teach you how to pronounce words correctly yeah that's ele- do you, have you heard of elocution maybe? no that's like pronunciation like how mm. to pronounce like right. words i guess stuff. that explains all my handwriting sort of shit aaron did you have elocution as well who me yeah did you get that no no i didn't have any like paid stuff what? um why could you think i speak well no it's because most that's, elocution has nothing to do with speaking does it it does it's how to pronounce words oh i thought you said that it's for handwriting no handwriting is for handwriting Okay. The same guy that did both. So. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. No, that's funny. That's a uh, yeah elocution. Ele. I don't even know if I pronounce that right. I probably need lessons <laughs> to just pronounce that word. Um. Wait. What if they made it such a hard word? 
the irony. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Don't you think alphabet's a hard word? Alphabet. Why is it called alphabet and not letters? Uh, that's, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I don't know why I thought that question. I don't know such high thoughts. <laughs> yeah man man's out there thinking why is red blue and why is why is red not blue and why is blue not red oh, oh and why is the alphabet not called letters so what's what's the plan i guess from now for you yeah just get a job i feel like that is just the pivotal moment for everything and just like so many things almost rely on that but yeah uh before we like round up the episode this is as you mentioned at the beginning this is the last episode of the year did any of you guys have like new year resolutions for for 2020, not for 2021, for 2020. Don't get me started. I don't know if like this year's like New Year's resolution, this year's like resolution has just been like thrown at the window because of everything that happened. My two were to get rid of my tardiness because I'm always late to everything. I think I was even a few minutes late to this call. So <laughs> <laughs> I was always late to everything. And to be better at texting and replying because... I think I've like left people on red for like months and then we'll be like, hey, and just carry on conversation like nothing happened. And yeah, I did not do well in either of those. And we didn't even go anywhere, so I can't fix the tardiness really. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, in a group chat recently, some people were just bragging about what the longest time it was that they haven't messaged someone. I'm like, shut up, man. Like, this ain't a good thing here, you pricks here. Like, what, what, what is your reason for not messaging someone? Like, just message them back. Like, Yeah, fuck you, Yash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hamish, yeah. what were your... Uh... Do you remember what your resolutions were for this year? Get paid more. Get third. Be- keep third wheel going, which is kind of good. Okay. Get paid more. Did that happen? I don't want to say something before it happens. Uh, okay. Okay. We are recording this a bit in, in advance. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, hopefully by then it stands on. So that'd be nice. What else? I wasn't expected to be at the same job, but obviously COVID made sure I, I, was, I stayed at the same job. So fair enough. But it got better. So who am I to complain, I guess? What else was I thinking of trying to do? I was trying to get as much done as I could. So I, I pretty much said it all my life goals and how many of them I could kind of complete in the in 2020. I tried to do. It was kind of more stacking up on money, I guess. I was meant to have like a long break. There was like meant to be a month break or something, but that didn't happen because now we just work from home. So there's no such thing as a break. So I'm trying to think. Maybe more will come to mind later, but what about yours, Aaron? Uh, I think the main one I said was uh, do something for charity, which... How did that go? It was, it was like, do something more than just like donate. But I haven't like done anything like, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking I'll do. Like help out at like a shelter or something. You could still Which do I that. still could do at Christmas. Mm. So maybe, maybe that's still on the cards. Can't you do the local yeah, community one where they give out the food boxes to the people who can't leave the house? Yeah, potentially. I, I just mean, I just haven't. Yeah, I, I, my bad, I haven't like researched enough on it. And then my other one was like to, uh, yeah, get the body of a Greek god this year but uh I don't, I don't think that's happened either actually it is happening for for listeners yeah it's happened it's happened so <laughs> for people that can't see me it's happened <laughs> but uh we yeah can. any anything for uh 2021 hannah or is it like a carryover no i'm over this I, i'm just i think it's just a dna <laughs> to be late i just i don't know i think it's just a part just of accepting it DNA. it is what it is i just want to travel more i'm so over i'm never thought i'd say i'm bored of being in london but I want to like go do stuff. I'm so bored. I don't know if I'd make that for 2021. It's still yeah. looking a bit ropes. I want to go to like five concerts in 2021, but I know all of them are going to get pushed back again. So yeah, I, I don't know what anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for 2021. I think um, mine is probably going to be a bit of a carryover from 2020, to be honest. Oh shit! My 2020 ones included like going to more concerts. So I had quite a few booked up, but then none of them fucking happened. Like. Was there was like Mo Gilligan, there's Stormzy, there's Kojo Fonz. There was like a whole bunch. Everything just keeps getting pushed back. And I'm just sitting here like, because I spent the money, but I can't do anything about it. Like I can maybe ask for a refund, but I'd rather wait anyway. So when everything hopefully dies down, hopefully there's a chance of a concert. Hopefully it's a better year anyway. We can all, can all look forward to that. It can't, it can't be worse, surely. Yeah, so rounding off the episode and the year, we have some like final questions we'll just end off on. So first one, to you Hannah is what is one piece of advice you'd give to younger you uh, I think just to be a little bit more selfish I feel like and to be a little bit naughtier when I was in school I was such a geek when I was in like secondary sixth form and everyone was like going around doing house parties and all sorts of jobs okay okay yeah be a little naughtier <laughs> I wish I was naughtier as a kid I was just not like 
I would literally just go to school and come home. I don't think I'd do that much, play netball on the weekend. I didn't do anything. Oh, no, I was just going to ask, how did you meet Noreen then? Like, because we obviously know you by Noreen, but how did you meet Noreen? So it's really, fu- so Noreen did a, like a exhibition thing. She was a volunteer at this exhibition with my sister. And then I met her at dinner with my sister. And I actually met Zishan when I was 15. He doesn't remember this and I'm still salty about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then I met him again and he, and I was like, do you not remember me? And he was like, no. <laughs> I, I bet I bet Z's some dodgy star sign, yeah. <laughs> School I bet he's one of one of those like <laughs> uh, what was the one you said you didn't like? Isn't he December twenty five or something? Christmas Day. No, he's like December, isn't he? That's that's funny though, he he didn't remember. But yeah, naughtier, naughtier, yeah. I, I think I'd even like take that a bit for myself as well, because I was that kid as well who just it's primary school and secondary school, just go into school, go home, pretty much, do my homework, play my custom teams on FIFA. You chose one of the brave questions, which you have to rate you for that. So how have you rejected someone in the past? <laughs> I had to check this question because, so I've got to keep this person in mind because I don't know who's going to listen to it. Yeah. I had to, yeah, I had to double check this one. So this actually went on for like a year. So you know when you like, when you know someone and because you, you think of them as a friend, like you're never, even if they like, yeah, the I'm never going to think of it as like, a, they like me because you don't see them in that way. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's a friend zone, friend zone. Yeah. Yeah. But they were obviously, well, now it's obvious, but they were like doing stuff. And I was like, okay. And didn't really like it, understand. <laughs> to be honest, I'm probably the guy in the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm <laughs> the guy in the situation as well. I can feel the pain. <laughs> and, and all my friends were like, oh, I think he likes me. I was like, no, no, it's cool. And then he said, he was making a list. He was like, oh, I want to like, go somewhere for dinner and then he made it he showed me on his notes on his phone it said um places to take pretty girls and i thought he wanted to take a girl on dates i was like yeah yeah go here go there go there have fun i'll see you later i didn't think anything of it and he was like oh do you want to go to and pick one of the places and i was like yeah yeah sure don't worry i'll make the reservations he thought it was me and him i turned up to green park station with all our friends <laughs> and made the reservation for everyone <laughs> Oh no. no. Have to pay respect for our brother down there. Pain in my chest. He was wearing a suit. But then to be fair, it was like quite a fresh front, so no one thought anything was dodgy because we all dressed up fairly quite quite a bit. And then when it came paying, he ev- obviously everyone just pays like just split the bill, it's not a big deal. He was he sat next to me, he was like, Do you want me to pay for you? And I was like, No, no. Independent <laughs> woman, I got my own shit. I still have no clue. So still after that, you were like Clueless. You, you oh, didn't have. You didn't have a clue. Come on, man. What are guys are gonna do these days? Like- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he, oh. I'm guessing he didn't do. He, did he try anything after that? Yeah, like this went on for like a year. Okay, and then how did you like basically end it? I said several times, like, "This is me and you." Like, not. Th- I didn't. I didn't actually know until um. Yeah, was there like a point? Was it like a click? It clicked. So this is the point that I actually clocked on. We walked, we were walking to like go home and I said, I'm going to this station and he was going to a different station. And he said to me, oh, I want to ask you something. So I thought it was just going to be like a question. Like a, I didn't know. I didn't think it'd be a big deal. Maybe just like a question. We, we were studying like, is there a question about what we were doing or whatever? He didn't say, I like you. He didn't say, can we go on a date? He said, can I be your boyfriend? And my exact reaction was, I was like, I'm not even joking when I said this. I said, uh, no, yeah, sure. Good chat. We'll talk about it today. Good chat, good chat. And I packed him on the back and I walked off. No. Oh my God. Fuck. How can you, oh, <laughs> how can you, you just treat him as if he just like put in a six out of 10 performance in a football game. <laughs> I was like, good, 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 good work. <laughs> Pat him in the back and now he's been subbed off. Good game. Good game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. So wait, have, did you, did he think you'd been on like dates beforehand? Did you ever go to like dinner beforehand? Like just the two of you or something? So you didn't think the other situations were dates? This is why Aaron said, this is my point here, why you have to explicitly confirm if it's a date. Yeah, wait, but have, did you do any of that? Like, like, did you ever go out on stuff that could have been dates? But Like he could have thought were dates? Or no, nah, not really. Westfield's not a date. JD tracksuit shopping is not a date, that's fact. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe maybe he's into that kind of stuff you know are you still friends are you still friends no our friendship kind of ended oh uh, we need to send our condolence to our brother yeah Aaron. yeah we're, we're thinking of you we're thinking of you brother 
Yeah, but this is why um, I always tell people you got to explicitly confirm this shit, fam. Otherwise, it's just you get too deep in your feels, and you, then you're gonna get fucked over later on. So, explicitly confirm it earlier on. At least the rejections earlier on as well. Get it done with. Yeah, I feel like I I I feel like boys don't really notice, but you a girl would do certain things based on whether it's a date or how the last date went, and it's kind of interesting. What would, what would they do? Can you? Uh... Aaron needs advice. <laughs> Ask him for yeah, a friend. Advice. Right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, ask your friend. His name's Hamish. All right. Okay, I'm asking for Aaron as well. <laughs> as in, I'm not sure a boy would be able to tell though. So the person that I'm with now, well, on our first day, I was like, I wasn't, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. But I just thought, <laughs> I haven't liked anybody in a while. This is very, like, let me, everyone was like, but you haven't liked anyone in a while. Just go. So, and try it. So I, I didn't make, I didn't really care to make any effort. Didn't really put in the effort. And then he like didn't give me any indication that he liked me, but then I kind of liked him. So I wanted to go on a second date because he didn't give me any indication. He didn't even hold my hand. I didn't even brush my hair for that second date. When I tell you, I did not, <laughs> I, I didn't do shit. And then by the third day, like we had both established that we liked each other. So I like was late for this date. I held my hair. I'd like did the most. Yeah. Like, when I tell you, I look like a tramp. I didn't even bother like brushing my hair. Like didn't do anything. So you lied as well. Bruh. Man, it's it's dangerous out here, man. Yeah, you you got from day bro. one, you got you got to put in the effort. So you have to hold Aaron, your mother, hold her hand on the first date, <laughs> give her a kiss. Yeah, don't worry, I've I've wrote it down. I've wrote it down. This is another thing I was saying. Some boys are like, are oh, you hold hand after you kiss, and some boys are like, you kiss first then hold hand. What what do you recommend? I I personally, if I was a boy, just like, what's the worst she can do? Just like take her hand away. That's the worst she can do. That is pretty bad though. That is a bit awkward. Yeah, that, that is like a, also a that confidence. That is basically like... Confidence yeah. destroyer right there. No, no, no. But the difference between her t- pulling her hand away versus you like... I've had guys go in for a kiss and I'm out here doing the Matrix like... <laughs> <laughs> like my the spinach that you need for that is crazy. <laughs> That's more embarrassing. And they have their eyes shut so they wake up to like... <laughs> They open their eyes. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Crazy. So, yeah, so have you ever been like when they like close their eyes or something and you're just like looking and they like start like, I don't know, doing like fish lips and stuff like that and like, and you're just like looking at it like, what's what are you doing? The Matrix thing where you put your back all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I saw a clip of you not too long ago. Yeah, I saw a clip of you. So there was this YouTuber trying to ask awkward questions, trying to get kisses from girls in public. Yeah, so like, oh, can I just kiss you? And then he went in for the kiss with the eyes closed. And then the best friend, yeah, she she had some mad wit. Yeah, so what she did, yeah, she got her two fingers up here, yeah, um, like a middle finger and an index finger, and kept them right next to each other, kept them horizontal, and then used that. So the guy kissed the the two fingers, yeah, thinking it was the lips, yeah, and then yeah, so she, they then he obviously um pulled away, opened his eyes after, and obviously he didn't know, yeah, so he was celebrating on camera, yeah, and then afterwards he found out that. He got played like a mug because he kissed the, basically the fingers and he thought he got a kiss from her. And then her and her friend just walked away. I'm like, bro, that, that girl's got a tech as fam. Oh, no. The, the worst ones I've ever seen when like a guy like pranks where they've done it. So the guy thinks he's getting, he's, he's about to like get with like some really like hot girl. And then like he closes her eyes or something and they swap it out with like, like one of his mates, like just like one of his guy mates. <laughs> So he ends up just like making out with one of his friends. And then the look on their face afterwards is like just shock horror. But yeah, thank thank you for sharing that story with us. We're not in that third wheel story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a bit of a I can't yeah, wait to we, hear this we, one. We we think of we think of him. He's in our thoughts. You have to pay respect. <laughs> yeah. Uh third and final question. So this is actually a question we ask every guest we have on the podcast, and that is what has been like a memorable third wheeling experience you've had? I have seventh wheeled where it's like the couple's thing and then I'm like this. It's like everyone to this, actually this friendship group that Noreen's in with me, everyone's like a couple. And then I was single for so long. So I was always the seventh wheel for like everything. <laughs> yeah. But I, I wasn't made to feel like a seventh wheel. Like I'm pretty yeah. good friends with everyone. I just feel like the awkward ones are like when someone likes someone in uni and they don't want it to be like, they're not sure and you have to like be the third person there so it looks like a friendship hangout thing and they get to know each other but you know what's going on those are like the worst it's probably what this guy was feeling from question number two <laughs> and then 
you kind of <laughs> when you invited all your friends, he was kind of like a bit like uh, and then everyone was like, I don't know what wheeling that was. I think the best bit was what the suit that he wore. There was a flower. No. Was he wearing like a bow tie or like a tie or anything? No, no. Or maybe he wore a tie. Yeah, yeah. It was because it was a tie. It was a, I remember it was a three piece. Oh yeah, three piece. You know. Yeah. Jeez. He put in the effort. <laughs> shout out! Shout out to my guy. Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in shock at some of these. Um, <laughs> um, oh yeah. Okay, so the next section is uh, nomination slash call out. So you can nominate one or many people to hopefully come on the third wheel in the future. My nominees would be Eden and Ruby. They're my two friends that I think would be really good guests. So. Okay, cool. Awesome. If uh, if you're listening, we'll like get in touch with you once. Actually, no, we'll tag you. We'll tag. We actually, this episode will already be out, so you're there to see the tag. Uh, yes. What we'll do is we'll get you to like just send us what their like Instagram is or something, and we'll like tag them when we release your episode. Yeah, sure. Cool, awesome. And last bit's like a bit of a shout out. So basically, you can just shout out whatever you want, anything you feel like. Uh, hey, Hannah, have you got anything? Yeah, the ragged apron. Always like check out our page. We do like <laughs> doing a Christmas box. We do bespoke stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, and do you like deliver? Yeah, everything's postal. Um, four pound for postage and packaging throughout the UK. Is okay. it same day awesome. or like is it the next day? Like, how does that work? So you get it the next day. Oh yeah, Amazon Prime thing. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't think my sister does next day. Let's see. Uh, on top <laughs> I'm gonna rat you out to your sister. <laughs> <laughs> Shay, listen to this. I actually need to place an order by this point. I would have probably placed another order with her. So. Oh man, not the, the ragged apron. I could, I could do. <laughs> <laughs> um, my loyalty is down here. <laughs> I could do. I could do. It depends on the rates, isn't it? Wait, um, that could be second channel content. But no, they... they then Dana Bakes versus Ragged, Ab- Ragged if, Apron. Yeah, if they don't test. do anything for allergens, then I, it may cause an issue, at least for the person that I need to order for. Hey, chaps. Moving on. Hamish, any, any shout out? Mine's going to be for the, um, firstly, Dana Bakes, and then secondly, um, <laughs> the gigs and now on ever album. Yeah, go listen to it. Check it out. It's a banging up. Cool. I'm going to shout out uh, this like bit of software called Camo. Um, so it's actually what I'm using at the moment. Um, basically just lets you use your iPhone or iPad as a webcam. And there's a free version. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a lot better quality than my own webcam. So especially with another like lockdown or however long that will go into, if you're still doing Zoom calls, you can like, yeah, your phone's in your pocket and probably like the best camera you probably own. So you can turn that into a webcam. So link in the description will be for that as well. But awesome. Yeah, thanks, Hannah, for coming on. No worries. Yeah, nice meeting you as well. Yeah, you guys too. And yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed the episode. And yeah, I guess we'll just speak to you next week. All right. Have a good day, everyone. See you in a bit. And have a good new year as well. Thank you, you guys too. See you. Bye. Okay, bye.